All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Good evening. Thank you for being here. You are here as part of the Maryland Virothon Forestry Training. This is our first of two forestry sessions. They are repeating sessions, um, but you, this is the first one. Um, our presenters this evening will be Bud Reeves, Anne Arundel County Forester, and joining us in a little bit will be David Plummer, who's the district manager of the Howard County Soil Conservation District. So I want to thank Bud for all his work with the Envirothon and for being here tonight to share his love and passion and knowledge of forestry with you all. And I'm going to turn it over to him now. So take it away, Bud. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, can you guys use the reactions things? Like, like um, I want to... Um, um, want to want to get an idea, idea how many have been how, have been in Envirothon before? Um, few, okay. Um, um, basically, well, basically, basically, the, the part of the Envirothon part, portion of the of the of the of the, of the test is um. Uh, um, you know, we, we're uh, testing you on knowledge of, far, of forest ecology, uh, forest pest management, uh, forest measurements, uh, inventory, and a little bit, of, little bit of silviculture, which is uh, um, um, cultivating and manipulating the forest in order to achieve, you know, goals. Um, um, uh, I have a little um, short. Um, PowerPoint, you know, because we go over, over a lot of this information. Um, but if you have questions, um, you know, put them in the chat and uh, April will keep, keep up with them and, and ask them. Um, and um, when you think of something, just hold it up and at the end we'll have a big question and answer session then too. So plenty of time for you to answer questions. Um, okay. Um, oh, and um, you know, always be asked this. Yeah, I've been doing Envirothon probably for 1995, so probably 22, 27 years now. Um, it's one of my favorite things to do. Um, I like like um, like working with the kids and um, like to see them grow and learn stuff. So uh, here we go. Share screen. Okay. And I'll try to hit the. Why, Joe? from the beginning. Okay. Okay. Um, a little bit about the information about the forest in Maryland. Um, um, Maryland forests are very diverse. Uh, we go um, geographically, we go from the um, Atlantic Ocean all the way up to the, the Appalachian Mountains. Um, and there's like four or five different uh, uh, geographic area areas that, that um, within there, and each each of them has their own um, um, uh, forest types and um, different trees. Um, it's so it's so it's there's a lot of diversity. Uh, there's also a lot of diversity in the area we're, we're in, the Mid Atlantic um, hardwood forest, as it's termed, um, which goes from um, upstate New York, all the way down to North Carolina, Georgia, um, has the greatest diversity of tree species of, of any um, forested area in the United States. Um, you, you'll find anywhere from 15 to 20, 25 different species on a, on a given acre of land. Um, out west where they have the pine forest, you, you, know, you usually only get one or two pine species. 
and maybe and if you're lucky one, one hard one so we're we're pretty diverse here um maryland's forests are a little different than um they were you know the place was first first settled back in 1600 or so um most 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 of the forest land in, in Maryland is owned by private individuals. Um, and even that, it's, there's a high number of, of individuals. Um, and here it is, and this is, how old is this? 1999, that's seven, uh, um, 17 years old, 18 years old. There are 79,500 different acres um, that were lost since previous inventory. And the number of land landowners who own few other um, 10 acres of, of woodland uh, increased uh, by 62% from 77 to 89. So there's a lot of smaller land landowners, landowners out there now. Um, this is this is a challenge for, for the for forest forestry in uh, in general because you have more people to work with and smaller acreages. Um, um by and large our, our trees are in pretty good shape um you know we, we we're our forests providing clean air clean water um and contributing mightily to the health of the chesapeake bay um uh, forage is one of the, of the key components of, components of the uh, bay program's cleanup efforts uh maintaining tree canopy uh maintaining forest buffers um uh, just keeping tree, 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 uh, trees out there in general, because um, that all that all help, helps helps the bay from water quality standpoint. Um, but also in, in Maryland, we're very keen to um, practice sustainable forestry. Uh, sustainable forestry is making sure that all the um, different. Uh, um, Categories, categories of, of uh, uh, lost the word here. Um, all, all, all the benefit, all the benefits of the forest are, are addressed uh, during the, the forest management process. Um, now years ago, um, timber, uh, timber was, was a driving force because uh, it's an economic force. You know, we need um, forest products for. For our, you know to live with, uh, we build our houses with it. We use paper, um, all types of things. Um, but you have to do that sustainably, and you have to have to have to address the wildlife. You have to address the water quality, um, you know, air quality, even even things like like visual things like aesthetics. Um, nobody likes to like like to see a. Um, Bunch of trees that have been just been uh, cut cut down because it doesn't look look as good. So all, all those all those are um, practice here here in Mar in, in Maryland by the, by the foresters here. Um, but the biggest probably the biggest thing we uh, do is is what the forest does for our quality of life, um, and that can. That can can't be over, um, overstated, you know, you know, that it beautifies our communities, but also, also, you know, provides it with fresh air, clean, and the clean water, um, also provides us with a wildlife habitat. You know, if you don't, if you don't have wildlife ha habitat, you don't have wildlife. Um, and a, and a, a bear, uh, you know, if you have a house, house with no trees on it, and all your neighbors don't have any trees. There's no hab habitat for for the um, for, for the animals to come there. So you can you can view them and um, enjoy enjoy their um, their presence there. Okay. One of the big things um, we do is we teach you how to measure the forest. Um, we're very much hands on. Of course, this time we won't be, but. Um, uh, forest measurements are, are used to do do one important thing, and that's make an inventory of the forest. Um, as a forest manager, 
until um, until we know, know what we're we're working with, we don't know what to do. So we have to go out there and do an inventory. Um, and there's very various ways. We won't get into the um, into the um, you know the, all the sampling and stuff like that. But we 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 we, we um, do want to show show you the tools we use and and, and, and um how and why we, we're doing that. Um, one of the one of the first things we do is um, learn learn how to pace. Um, the, most of our tools are 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 um, calibrated to so use at a, a dis special distance, and that's that's um, sixty six feet, or common term for that turd is a chain. You might want to write that down. Um, um, chain is 66 feet because it's a sur it's a survey message, message and our tools are, are calibrated for that uh, our built more sticks or clinometer uh, yet you have to pace out 66 feet in order to use them properly um, we'll also also we're going to use, we use a diameter tape um, and a wedge prism and we'll go over those and um, in, in detail how, how to use them and there's uh, the instructional videos on the on the uh, marathon website that we made, made here uh, this past um, past fall, or actually it was a couple months ago. Um, anyhow, um, we're going to use these to con um, show you how you do a sample plot. Um, that we use use for forest in inventory, inventory. Um, and how to take that data that that we we obtain. And use it to interpret um, the interpret the data and go for, for further our our goal of uh, managing the forest. Now, when we when we do this this time, it's going to be a little bit different because we won't, won't be out there measuring them in in, um, in person. Um, and we can't try as we could. We can't couldn't figure out a way to uh, allow you to do this over online like this. So we're, we're, um, pay um, pay special attention to, to the methodology of what we're using and how we're doing it, because um, that, that's that's probably going to be important. I see Dave just showed up, <laughs> got back home. Okay. Okay. One of the important things is tree diameter. Um, tree diameter. Uh, Knowing the tree down there can lead you to all kinds of information. Um, uh, lead you to how many, how much woods in a tree, um, how broad the canopy is, all things like that. And how we how we measure tree diameter is with a um, tool called a diameter tape. And, and let me pull this all the way. And up, whoops, up in the um, upper right, see a, you see a forester there. That's marine, by the way. Um, using a diameter tape, and how you use a diameter tape is you measure up four and a half feet from the high side of the tree, and you put the put the hook in there, and you wrap the diameter tape around there, and you you read the uh, measurement off, and you measure that to the nearest tenth of an inch. Um, Uh, where's it going? Yeah. Now, um, it's, it's um, is it four and a half feet or diameter breast height or DBH uh, is um, you want to what you want to be consistent. So every and that applies to everybody. So everybody in the United States and in fact the entire world uh, uses that same measurement. Yeah, you know, but if you're outside of the United States, we use the um, um, feet, uh, feet and yards and whatnot. Um, everybody else uses the metric. They use 1.37 meters or 1.3 meters. So, so, so if, if somebody says this tree is is um, 40, 42 uh, inches or 42 centimeters DBH, um, you, you know it's measured. You measure that. So, I want might want to remember that one too. 
Okay. Okay, tree height. This is a this is a tricky one. Um, uh, tree heights measured um, several ways, but one way you use it is using a uh, clinometer. A clinometer is a uh, tool that's um, it's got a got a dial on it, and you look you look through the end of it, and, it's, and you look look at this this diagram here. You'll, you'll see two scales. Now you you also use this in um, in soil for for measuring slope. On in, in the soils soils per, uh, portion and the days pull uh, hold one up right, right there. Thanks. Um, um, the soils portion you're using the slope you're using the left hand side. Now to do tree height. You use the right hand side. Okay. Um, the first thing you got to do with this uh, this thing is you got to pace out. 66 feet. Um, as you're standing right next to it, it's not going to it's not going to work because we're doing a triangulation. And by by try by try by um, taking this reading, you're you're um, uh, creating a triangle so you can measure the uh, uh, the base the base of the triangle. Okay. Okay. Now do now use this. Because grounds, you know, you know, ground, you know, earth is not flat. There's hills. There's all kinds of divots and um, depressions in it. So wherever you're standing, as long as you're 66 feet, um, you can take you can take take the tree height. Now, how you do this is you <laughs> take take your kilometer and and we'll keep keep both eyes open and look at the base of the base of the very base of the tree. And line it up with this this black line right 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 here. It's on it's in the um, uh, view, uh, viewpoint of, of the uh, kilometer. Then you look at the right hand side, not the left hand, but the right hand side, and you, you get that number. Um, here it's here it's saying uh, about fifteen positive. Now remember, remember um, it's important to know whether you're positive or negative, because we'll get to that in a second here. And then um, you, you take 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 the same instrument, and you go up to the top of the tree, and you, and you look, you find the top of the tree, and you get your next reading, and it'll de it'll definitely be positive then. Going up. The re reason why they're negative and positive um, is um, I'll show you show you the ne next slide. Okay. Okay. If you're standing, um, if you're standing here and here, um, uh, here's your kilometer. Um, we we. Shoot down the tree. Um, that's going to be a, you're shooting. At, uh, you're looking at a negative number there. In the slide before, we were at positive ten, which is right, or positive fifteen, which is right about here. Now it's because we're below. We happen to be below the base of the tree. Um, but either way. Um, you shoot the base of the tree and take that number. If it's negative, it's because you're above the you're above the base of the tree. And if you're on flat ground, um, that number is going to be your eye. Um, like mine's mine's about six foot. Um, now shoot that number, remember it, and you go up to the top of the tree, and I got this. Menu in front of me. I don't know how to get rid of it. Uh, and take that number. In this example, it's 27. And here is 8.5, but that's a negative number. Okay. If it's a negative number on your bottom number, you add it to, to your upper number 
you get your total height. And here your total height's 35.5 feet. Here, so if you add the 8.5 to the 27, it gives you 35.5 feet. Now, if you're, if you're below it um, and you get a positive num uh, number for your first reading, like we did, did uh, previously, at, you have, you're, at, nine, at nine, nine feet here and the 42 feet for the, for the upper number, you take the, the nine feet and you subtract it. This gives you a, a total height of 33 feet. So you got that? Remember, negative, add, positive, subtract. It's kind of the opposite. But, but as you see, you uh, that's, how, that's, how you, that's how you create your, your triangle. Because you create the create right triangle there. And this, this thing, um, allows you to determine the length of your, of your base. Okay? Not quite, let, uh, let me know. Okay. Hey, bud, there is a okay. question. That's There's actually two questions. Okay. We're, if okay. you wouldn't mind. First one is, what are champion trees? What are champion trees? Mm -hmm. Um. Well, cha champion trees are a um, uh, designation that was actually started by uh, the first Maryland forester, uh, Fred Besley, back in the 1930s, um, or, or maybe it's the 20s, 20s or the 30s, a long time ago, almost 100 years ago. Um, and he wanted to give recognition, give recognition to the big trees that are. Um, that have, been, that have historical significance, and also just for the fact that they're the biggest of their, their species. Um, and champion trees are nominated by anybody. You can nominate, it, uh, if you find a big tree, um, you can look it up on the um, uh, website, MarylandBigTrees.com, or, or just Google Maryland Big Tree Program. And they have a listing, they have a listing of all the trees in Maryland uh, by state and county uh, and by species because um, they're they're uh, collected they're collected by, by species and, and measured what they do is they measure the height uh, the circumference and the crown spread and they have a little formula they me measure together to get uh, come up with a number of points and the one with the most points uh, is a is a champion um, that's what a champion tree is. And uh, American, American Forest that does, does this too. Um, and they keep records for all the champion trees all, all across the state, all across the United States. Um, we have several um, champ, uh, national champions in, in Maryland. And in fact, originally we had the original um, champion white, white oak, which was the Y oak. Which is on the eastern shore that was a good 450 years old. Um, the um, um, tree fell down on a storm, unfortunately. Um, planted a, they, but they had collected a seed and and um, cultivated um, um, its offspring. So uh, there's a the son of the son of or the daughter of. Um, uh, oak is grown there now. Grown there now. That's what a champion tree tree is. Thank you. I'll hold the other question. question. Okay. Yes, I'll hold the other question till close to the end, since it's about test format. Okay. Okay. Very good. Uh, yeah. Okay. But I would just add. This is David. Could I just add that um, some counties have actually measured and created lists of their own champion trees. So there's county champion trees yes. and state champion trees. And then when it comes to the forest conservation law, there's also, um, I forget the term, you probably know it, uh, significant trees or noteworthy <laughs> trees or trees that are not quite the champion oh, tree. Specimen trees. Specimen trees, thank you. Within, they're usually oh, within what, oh, 10 or 20%. Specimen tree, yeah. They're usually within 10 or 20% of the um, champion. They have to be, they have to be with 25%. 
Okay. And so those are significant because uh, when you're doing a development or something like that, the forest conservation law requires you to consider those size trees as well. Yes. Yeah, very good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yep. Um, April, this, uh, I can't, I can't, can't read the top, uh, bullet, um, their way to determine the number of logs or sticks in a tree, or is there one above that? Okay. Okay. Got it. Okay. Hide, hide the video controls. Okay. Um, one, of the, one of those, those things foresters do um, is we, we measure um, trees, um, not just, just to know what we have there, but also because they're valuable. Uh, trees create lumber and wood and wood, wood products for all the product, a lot of the th things that we use. Um, and what we need to know is um, how many board feet are in a of lumber or in a given tree. Um, you might want to remember that too. Um, um, now, to determine the volume of a tree in board feet, uh, first we have to have two things. We have to how many what the diameter is. We also have to know how many logs are in a tree. Or if it's a pulpwood, um, how many sticks? Uh, okay, a, a standard log um, is a unit of measurement equaling 16 feet long. Um, that's, that's standard for, for, for log measurement, um, hardwood or softwood. Um, now, when you measure a log, you measure how many logs, how many, how many the number of logs in a tree. And as you measure them, you go from the, from the large end to the small end, but you want to stop. Um, you're going from a stump up, up to a eight inch diameter. It's about the size of a paint can. We used to say a coffee can, they don't have, they don't use them anymore, uh, which is about eight, eight inches in diameter. So you can visualize what a coffee can, uh, a paint can is, as you as you go up. As soon as you get to about eight inches, roughly, uh, that's when you stop. Okay, for a pulpwood, um, and pulpwood is used um, what's used used at mills to make paper, uh, because the trees are are just these are small trees and they're and they just get run up into chips, and they use them to make paper. Uh, the small trees we measure. The number of eight foot sticks, um, uh, one stick, um, one pulpwood stick foot, eight foot long. And from that, you use go from the stump up to a four inch diameter top. And I think beyond that is just waste, okay? Now to measure, to measure the logs and the sticks in a tree, um, we use what's called a merit hissometer. Um, and this can be found on one of the, uh, the uh, Biltmore stick. Um, do you have a Biltmore stick, Dave? Or I thought I had one. Um, Biltmore stick um, or, or forestry's yard stick um, uh, was developed down in uh, the Biltmore state near Asheville, North Carolina. Um, that, that's why it's called the Biltmore stick. Um, that's one of the uh, first properties in, in the United States back in this being. 80s or 18, 1880s or so, where they started doing forestry down there. Um, they have, he, he, he showed on, on his screen, um, log scale stick. And that's the hypsometer. Okay. Now, the, the use of the um, merit hypsometer on a Biltmore stick. It's a lot easier, one thing, because you just hold the stick up against a tree and, and, measure, and using your eye to take the measurement. But you're going to have to be one chain away from the tree. So you got to pace out one chain away from the tree. 
hold the stick upright um, 25 inches from the tree, I mean, from your eye rather, um, and line the, the, base, the base of the base of the stick or the hypsometer with the stump uh, with the stump of the tree. Then hold hold on um, hold, hold it there. You want to go from the base of the tree and look up the stem until you re reset hypothetical eight inch eight inch top. And then you read the the number of logs right off the hypsometer. We have we have a diagram of that or no. Um, Okay. Oops. And for pulp, we we'll just measure up to a four inch, and and just and interpolate for it. Now, what you what do you want to do? Because um, the trees have trees will come an even number of logs. Because um, you very possibly have half a log. You might have. One, one and a half, three and a half, or even four and a half logs in a tree around here. So you want to measure to the nearest half log. So if you say, so if you have a tree that not not that doesn't go quite up to two two logs, round down to to a one and a half logs, and that's what you, that's what you would call it. Okay. Okay, now we now we know the their height and the number of logs. Um, then we can determine the volume of the tree. Uh, this is uh, this is an important number because um, if we're taking the inventory for determining the value of the of the, of the trees in the forest, uh, we need we need to come up with an estimate. Um, and how this work is is just plain old geometry. Um, and we're determining the Laval cylinder, um, which is the tree trunk. Um, so, but it's not quite a, right, quite, not quite a cylinder because there's taper to a tree. Um, so there's, there's a, a few adjustments to it, but you know, all, this, all this math has been worked out for you. Um, so, uh, you, <clears throat> once, once you know the number of logs and the diameter, then you can figure out um, on a table or, or on your deck um, if uh, that's, that's what you're working with, how, ma how many um, board feet of, of lumber is in a tree. Also says here, and this is, this is, this is one, another thing I might, might say you might want to um, take note of. What is a board foot or board feet? Um, board feet is a um, it's, it's imaginary because it's um, you can have all different dimensions. But if you take a, a, a board that's twelve inches wide, twelve inches long, and one inch thick, that's that's how much a board feet that is one board foot. Um, or if you want to express that in um, in, in, cube, in, in inches, cu cubic inches, that's 144 cubic inches. Okay. Now, because we're foresters, we don't like to use math that much, even though we use it all the time. We also use um, volume tables, um, and these are, these are Tables are just calculated out, look it up, and don't have to um, do all the calculations for it. Because uh, there are formulas you can do, you can, um, but they're tedious. Um, now, for in the east, co in the east coast here, um, we use what is called the International Quarter Inch Rule Volume Table, um, and a Talk about the other ones because there's there's several others that we use too. Uh, one's Doyle, the other one's uh, Scribner. I think it's a fourth one. Is there a fourth one, Dave? I can't remember. Um, 
Those aren't those, exactly. Those are, the three, um, those are the three I know. Those are the only three I know, bud. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so maybe there's only three. Anyhow, uh, the Scribner are not as accurate as the International Qu Quarter Inch because they, they went through a lot of research to figure out the quarter inch. Um, so that's what we, that's what we use and um, foresters use because that's what, uh, because we're, we're looking for accuracy. Um, um, the Biltmore sticks, ones you, ones you would probably use, they already have volume tables on them, but the only, um, they only get through for a uh, even number of logs. They don't, they don't have a, a for a, a half log. Um, so we'll provide you a, a um, um, volume table um, that has half logs. Okay. And here is a, what's this? Um, well, here, well here, here's a board foot. So it's 12 by 12 by one inch thick. Um, and we're not talking about board foot, but it wants to dance. It's, it's a unit of, unit of volume. But here's a, here's a volume table. Um, and here it is, volume table, but not usable 16 foot logs. It's international quarter inch rule. Okay, so say we have a um, log that's 26 inches diameter and three and a half logs. And you go, so what you do is you go down to your diameter when this left column here, find 26, and you scoot across to this column here that has three and a half logs, and you come up with your answer. And the answer there is eight, 801 board. Uh, board feet, and that would be the answer. Simple as that. Um, do another one. Twenty inches, four logs. Twenty, go all the way across. Four hundred eighty, four hundred eighty board feet. And as you can see, going from a ten inch log for one ten inch diameter log with one log is only thirty six board feet up to 26, 26 one with three and a half logs. It's quite a difference in the amount of wood, wood is in that tree. If you get all the way down here, um, you got a 40 inch, a 40 inch log with five, bo five logs, that's 2,693 board feet. That's a big tree. Um, um, it takes, the average house uses a, uses about about forty thousand board feet of lumber to uh, for to be built. So you can see it takes quite a few trees to build one house. Um, okay. But I I might mention something I think that confuses kids sometimes. Um, the table expresses board feet, but when we talk about uh, the price of lo of uh, logs, like if we say red oak is selling for $400 a thousand board feet. That's in thousand board feet. Yeah. And I think sometimes that's confusing. So a lot of times if you're talking about the price of yeah. yellow poplar or red oak or white oak, um, you know, let's say it's $350. That's not per board foot, it's per thousand board feet. Correct, yes. Yes. Yeah, so, um, um, yeah, how, how, how do you explain that? Um, it, it, well, if you're value, taking value of tree, you'll add up all the all, all the, uh, the volumes of, of all the trees in that species. Um, you know, it doesn't matter what uh, what size they are. You get the total volume of all of all the, all the logs of that species, and, and if you have, let's say. Um, 26,000 board feet, um, then you have 26, uh, 260 um, thousands or 26 thousands. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, next one. 
Got any questions? Question, write them down. We'll, we'll we'll answer them. Okay. Okay. And that is slide index. Um, slide index is a very useful tool for a forester because it it tells the forest um, or the land manager, mostly foresters, how productive uh, a given site is. Um, because this, each site that's um, that you find out find, find out in the woods where where a tree is growing, it's going to be different. It's going to be a, a di on a different slope, uh, different soil type, uh, different hydrology. Uh, it could be a dry site, could be a wet wet site, or it could be a moist site. Um, but how, how we measure productivity uh, for these for all these sites is with a uh, measurement called the site index. Um, now, while we use the um, site index, uh, we use what we use is the age of the tree and the total height of the tree. So that's, that's this is something you would use for the um, uh, clinometer, because the merit hypsometer is just using measuring number of logs. The, the uh, clinometer is used measure height, and don't don't get them confused because you, you definitely come up with wrong answers. Um, but using the um, height of the tree, but also the age of the tree. We we come up with a uh, what's called the side end, and um, and for convenience sake and also for consistency, um, we base, base these on a certain on a certain age. Uh, and for eastern forests, what we use is a hundred years. I mean, I mean, use fifty years rather. Uh, I was thinking west where they use a hundred. Um, they use f f fifty years. Um, so, um, for for a test for a test question, what we what we would do, um, we would give you a, a sample or a um, sample tree core, and but we use plastic ones because the wood, the real ones are very brittle; and they they wouldn't last like two minutes. Um, what you do is you count the number of of rings on on the on the tree. On, on that increment core, next age, and then you take your height, the uh, height that you 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 found with the uh, um, clinometer, you put a place it on this index curve. Now, how the how does this work? Okay, well, say um, um, say your say your tree is you you you, you you looked at the tree and it's 70 years old, and 80 foot tall, 80 foot high. So what you do is you start off here at the age. Where's my cursor? I can see my cursor here. You go over to 70. And then you go up to 80. 80 is right here. And that's where your side index is. Now to read this properly, whoops, right here, you don't go straight across. Um, Cause that'll give you, what the hell? Um, you don't go straight across it, I give you 70. What you're looking for is a slide index. The slide index is on here and see how these, there's these curves. What you wanna do is follow that curve and go across like this and get it right about there. So it's it's approximately, well, it's kind of hard to see, kind of hard to see on the screen like that, but it's approximately 75, okay? And, and also another way to check yourself, remember, is if it, you know, it's at 50 years, right? Um, so at 50 years, this side index will be, will be the will be the total height. So if you go from 50 and you go to 70, right here, 
if you went across, it'd be 62. But because you know, because you do those fine angles, you're following this curve, this curve right here, and that brings you to 70 because you're at 50 years of age and 70 feet tall. Okay. Now this 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 um this uh, trips people up a, a lot because. There's a tendency to just clear and to go straight across. Um, you got to have to remember to find your number and follow that curve over to the right hand side to where the side index is, and make sure and make sure you follow that curve. Okay. You have any questions about that? We we can, we can go over that. Um, okay. Yeah, but we have about 10 minutes left. Oh, okay. Okay, here's a, oh boy, okay. Here's here's another chord. Um, um, here's another um, volume, and that's a chord. Um, chord is a um, measurement of, many things is a measure of pulp wood, but also how we measure firewood. Um, there's a lot of um, forest products law in, in merit says you have to uh, sell wood by the cord or a portion thereof. If you look at those little bundles you see in the, in the convenience store or the, or the supermarket, you'll see somewhere it'll say this is 128th of a cord. Um, that's because of that law. They have a, a full whole cord wood is a lot of wood. It's uh, the measurements are eight foot eight foot long, four foot high, and four foot wide. So go eight foot high, four foot um, no eight foot long, four foot high, and four foot wide. And you do the math on that. That comes out to one hundred twenty eight. Um, Okay, you might see that too. Um, but this is how they measure pulp wood. Well, when, it, when they sell um, pulp wood to the mill, is how many cores there is because a lot of times it's cut small in um, small batches like this. It was also for firewood too. Um, and um, for example, um, and fire, firewood's kind of heavy too. Uh, if, you see, if you see somebody has a small small pickup truck says he had a quarter wood on it um he's wrong um standard quarter of oak, oak firewood is going to weigh something like six thousand pounds um unless it's a big truck he's not going to be able to fit it okay okay next one. Oh man we got a lot of stuff here to go um turning basal area um Basal area is a, is a measure of, of stocking or density of a forest. Um, and how, um, how we measure that is with a wedge, wedge prism. Um, but the basic uh, measurement itself, the basal area is a measure of the cross-sectional area of a given tree and expressed in qu square feet at deep diameter breast height. Um, now there's a formula for that. Basal area with all the pi r squared taken out of it is 0 0.005454 times the diameter squared. So, for example, if you take um, if you take a um, a ten inch measure a ten inch tree, um, so that'd be ten squared, which is ten times ten, hundred. That would have a basal area of 0.5454 square feet. That's that's a good that's an easy example of it. Okay. Now how it's measured, how we measure it is with a wedge prism. And this 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 little glass thing you see right here. And um, how you do is you hold it over top of your, your point and um, look at the tree. 
Um, if you, as you if you look at the tree, like you look look at this little thing right here. If you see this, um, that portion of the of the, of the trunk is, is not lining up with the upper down point. That's a tree you don't tally. So that tree is considered out. Now, if it does measure um, line up, uh, that has an end tree, and you measure you measure that as an end tree. And if you have a have a tree and you usually wind up with at least one, one or two a day, um, probably more, uh, a borderline tree where it just can't really really tell the difference of whether it's in or out. That's a, that's a borderline tree. And what we do with that, well, how we handle borderline trees, is we could call the first one out and next one in. And just be consistent um, while, you're, while you're doing it. So you start the day, um, so you start your plot. First one you, you call out, next one you call in. If you see it, if you find that a third borderline tree in that plot, then you call that, then you call that one out. Okay, that, that way you do it, Dave. Um, okay. Now, yeah, the, the first one, yes, but some, I'm sorry, the first one, I was on mute. The first one's out and the next one's in for borderline trees, yes. Yeah, yeah. Now, there's really good videos uh, we just did uh, using how to use this prism on the on the website. Um, very, very, they're very thorough, um, well-made. It's it really, really easy to see it because, um, you know, unfortunately, um, normally for a training day, you know, the tra training day we'd uh, we'd uh, take you out, and let you use them. Um, but if you're still here next year, you'll probably probably be able to use them next year, not this year, unfortunately. Okay. Um, once we have our basal area, um, and how we how we do that we 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 consider. Each one of those end trees to eat, um, to have ten square feet of basal area. Okay, um, you know, it's prism a ten factor mark with with her, it's a ten factor prism, prism, ten prism which is mark prism, right. So you take your mark. tally of the end trees and then multiply it by ten. Yep. Yeah. Now for the twenty factor, you use twenty, but we use an East Coast here ten, ten factor. Um, so remember, it's it's a 10x 10x or 10 factor prism. So we all the entries with we, we tally up and we figure out how many uh, how many square feet of basal area. So if you have seven entries, for example, you would have 70 square feet of basal area. Okay. Now, um, and how we um, and how we did this was we started started. Start what um, one area, one, one one tree, and we start. We go around a plot and count the ins and out trees. Um, that's and we, we show that in the visigram. I'm trying to hurry up here because I'm right now I'm running out of time. Okay, now once we have the um, number of trees. We also count the number of trees per acre. Um, and to do that, we use a 20th acre plot because you can use it with a prism count, but there's a lot more math. We don't like math. Um, so it's easy to use a 20th acre plot. Um, and that's uh, 26.3 uh, feet square. And what we do is we count all the trees over two inches, multiply that by 20, that's your blow up factor, and that's how many trees per acre. So, as it says here, if you have 13 trees times 20, that'll give you 260 trees per acre. Okay. So, if we have 260 trees per acre and we have 70 square feet of basal area, to determine the stocking level, we go to this table. Okay. We get, we have number of trees per acre. We have, what was that, 260? Which is right about here. Oops, can't click that. It's seventy square feet of basal area. So we go from where's my cursor at? So it's from two hundred sixty 
to 70. This puts it right about here. Okay. I'm going to read this, the stocking level. We go to the that right hand side, side of that, that polygon there, where it says stocking percent. And then we had, it was right about here. So we have, I would say probably about 8% stocking. And that would be the, the stocking level for that stand. Okay. Now we can also use this chart to figure out your um, average tree diameter. So of all the tree, trees we had, we're at 68%. We go up to here, read across this thing here. We have a we have about a three point a seven point three. 7.2 average diameter for our trees. Because what because what this tells when, it's, when it tells us as a forester when it's full when a stand is uh, fully stocked like this, it means it means that on average the trees the trees in the stand have enough room to grow uh, for the time being. Um, and there's, you see there's these, two, these black lines here the there's a C B and A. Anything within the B and A portion, portion of, the, of this graph here, um, or matrix, um, anything within here is fully stocked. Now, the, now the closer you get to A, uh, you're going to get um, a reduced growth, and growth starting to slow down until it reaches the, uh, the uh, A right here. In which case, it was considered overstocked. That's because, that's mean one might want to th thin the stain out a little bit. Now, if the converse is understock, um, then you want to do things like maybe plant plant trees trees to, to boost the number of trees trees in the stand. Um, what keep keep an eye out for invasive species that are um, might harm the trees. Um, but basically, basically, your 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 land is not um, use not being. Um, Fully, fully, fully used right away. Okay. Is that a good okay. stopping point, April? <clears throat> April, yeah. is that a good stopping point? I think so. We're right at seven o'clock or a little bit after. Um, I know we scheduled this for one hour and there's so much great information. Um, you know, one question that came in that I think is kind of a good place to, um, you know, take what you've just taught us um, and think about how that's going to be used on the test. Um, we've talked a lot about these measurements and how to use tools. Uh, one question we had is how is information like that that would normally be done in person going to be adapted into an online test format? I'll give you my two cents on that. Um, obviously, we're at a disadvantage because so much of the forestry information is based on tools and measuring trees and things like that. So it will be tough, but I think the questions will probably focus on how the tools are used. And, you know, that's why Bud emphasized some of the things like <clears throat> how far you have to be from a tree to take certain measurements and just understanding the different tools and the principles of how they're used. That's going to probably end up being the focus yeah. of the questions. As opposed to it's very difficult for yeah. us to give uh, of an example of a tree and the tool. Uh, it, it, you can't do that visually. So it's more going to it's I think yeah. it's more going to focus on. Uh, how the tools are used, and then also how the data. We may give you information, um, you know, if the use of the tool produced this, what can you tell us about the tree, or what does that allow you to calculate, or things like that. That's, I think, how we're going to have to do it. Yeah. Yeah, so, so uh, uh, really fo focus on the methodology, um, you know, how the tools are used and how and, uh, mm -hmm. to measure. And what and what's what's being done with those measurements? Um, um, because, because we can't, um, you know, that's, that was one of the fun things I hear about kids like you know the students like forestry is because they get out in the woods. Well, we can't take you out in the woods, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, we'll do it the best I'm, we can. I also wanted to mention, you know, this talk is usually about an hour and a half, so it was I put Bud at a disadvantage by giving him this many slides. There's so much stuff to cover, and so. I saw a couple of questions, but April, I think you're going to put the full slideshow up 
so that people can see there's probably only about six slides left and it's mainly about um, regeneration methods, which are harvesting, uh, and then a little bit about silviculture. So uh, those things are fairly self-explanatory and there's a lot of writing with them. So I think if the kids read that online, the students will uh, be able to interpret most of that themselves. Yeah, absolutely. You make a great point. So it's already on the Envirathon website, um, which I've popped into the chat a few times. If you're not a run computer watching this, you could just search for the Envirathon website and look at the training resources under forestry. And you'll see not only a forestry study guide, but you'll see the Envirathon forestry presentation. That is the link to the PowerPoint that Bud is presenting tonight and David's assisting with. And then we have videos um, that actually go in and demonstrate how to make some of these measurements and use some of the tools that um, Bud has um, walked us through. Um, so, you know, the website's a great resource. If you review anything we didn't cover tonight and you have questions about it, even if you cannot make the next forestry session, you could register and put those questions in the registration form and we'll make sure that they get answered and report it. Um, so that you could review that video afterwards. Um, so we'll make sure that you, you are prepared. Um, yeah, we, just so much good quality information. And when you're not out and about touching it, it's, it's easy to, um, you know, it's a lot easier doing. Yeah, it's, We're it's learners hard. by doing. <laughs> And April, yeah. I want to thank you for giving, saying that I assisted. All I really did was shake my head a little bit. I mean, Bud, thank you for, you for handling that. You were, you were the Vanna White of yeah. the evening. Um, yeah, that's right. I was Vanna. I'll mention one other thing. Um, even when we have the full amount of time to present all this information, there's still information in the study guide that we can't cover. So a couple of things I'll mention, and Bud may have a couple, uh, yes. tree biology uh, we could have spent, you know, half a day talking about tree biology and, and how trees grow. Uh, those questions are all for grabs. There's also a lot of things on insects and diseases, which, again, by themselves are a whole lesson. So there's things in the study guide and then there's links to resources in the study guide. And, uh, you know, although we covered what we could today, all of those things are up for grabs on the test. And, and we'll have to incorporate them a little bit more than we normally do because, about a third of the test is usually in the field using the tools. Um, so we're going to have to adapt some of those other uh, aspects to the test. One thing I will say, we will have a tree ID section. We didn't get a chance to cover that, I don't think. But we will provide some pictures of 10 common trees to Maryland um, to allow you to have an opportunity to identify the trees. That'll be one section of the test. Anything else, Bud, that I missed? Yeah. Uh, a student in the um, chat wants to know if you need a scientific good. name um, for those trees. No, we don't need scientific names. Just com just uh, common names. No. Are fine. Common names are yeah. fine. Uh, that's hard enough. Yeah, <laughs> but but if you use, if you call if you, uh, if you, if a for example a tree is a red maple, and you call it a red oak, it's wrong. If you call it a maple, it might give you half credit. But if, but if you say it's, um, just say it's red, America can give you anything. <laughs> um, well, and, and so that's, I'll mention that. Um, if it's red maple and you say silver maple, uh, you're probably going to get it wrong. If you're not sure of the exact species, be wrong. you may just say maple. And the same would go for oak. You know, there's white, black, um, chestnut, and red oak. If you're not sure, but you're pretty sure it's yeah. an oak, put oak. You may get half credit. But if it's a red oak and you yeah. get specific and call it a white oak, it's going to be wrong. Yeah. Yeah. And in general, well, most of yeah, your we'll questions. Give, give you credit. Hmm? Go ahead, Ben. Yeah, it, yeah. We'll give you give you credit for for getting to the, the genus at least. Um, um, okay. The common name, the common name genus, not yeah. Latin name. Now, when you say genus, now, it kind of sounds back to the scientific. Yeah. And most of the questions yeah. would be multiple choice, fill in the blank, maybe a couple short answer where you may have to describe how to use a tool or something, but right. nothing nothing that's going to blow your mind. We're not giving you calculus calculations. 
Um, uh, as Bud yeah. said multiple times, foresters don't want to do the math either. So. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Why we're not engineers. <laughs> exactly. One of many, one of many reasons. All yeah. right. Well, with that, I'm going to thank Bud and David um, for presenting thank tonight. You. Yeah, thank you, Bud. And uh, thank you, April, for organizing everything. Absolutely. We do have our yeah. next forestry training um, on April 7th next week from 6 to 7. In general, it will be covering a lot of the same material. Um, again, you're welcome. We Everyone's welcome to attend as many of the trainings as they'd like. You are not going to say you can only do this one or only do that one. Um, but if you do join the other and you hear some of the same material, that's because it's repeating. Um, but we'll also be recording yeah. that. So like I said, if you have questions we didn't answer tonight that you want to still submit, you could still register. If you don't show up, we're not going to penalize you or anything for that. But we could cover your question in the Q&A um, if there's, you know, if we're able. And then you can, re you can record, uh, excuse me, review the recording afterwards. Um, but we appreciate you all being here. Many of you are new to Envirothon, so we're excited that you're sticking with us, even in this virtual environment. Um, and we'll, we hope that you'll continue to be involved after this year. So you can see Bud and David out in the field and actually get your hands on these tools. Um, but we're excited to have you. Have a wonderful night. Have a wonderful spring break if it's your spring break. Um, and thanks again to you, Bud and David. Any parting words, gentlemen? No? no All just, right. Just try to set the guy and just have fun. Absolutely. That's the most important part. Have fun. Yeah. <laughs> yep. All right. Yeah. Have a great weekend, everybody. Okay. Bye. Okay.